you know when you taste your own breath and it tastes like it would stink to the rest of the world <laughs> but you love the way it tastes so you keep swallowing it and then exhaling that flavor of yourself right back into your mouth there's no app for that <laughs> You know, when someone walks behind you and their mere presence tickles the skin on the back of your neck and a tingle trickles down your spine and it feels like your insides wiggle for a second, well, there's no app for that either. And you know, when you're walking in the dead of winter and you, call, and you can literally feel your heart rattling the prison bars of your rib cage, and then that euphoria that you feel once you've been embraced by the warmth of four walls, well, there's no app for that either. And you know, when you lock eyes with someone and whatever it means to be human travels through the air in the instance of a glance, then it's just too human for us humans, so we look away. Uncertain of what to do next, well, there's no app for that. And you know, when you see the sunrise for the first time in a long, long time, and no matter how cool the morning air is, you still feel all warm and cuddly inside. There's no app for that. And you know, when you miss someone, your mind flashes a montage of memories, and you can feel tears pushing through the back of your throat, a clump of nostalgia sitting in your chest, but you're in public, so you force a cough and a counterfeit smile, despite the tremble in your chin. There's no app for that. And you know, when your face hurts from smiling, from, from laughing, from crying, and the, and the muscles in your cheeks feel as sore as your arms do in the day, like the day after a good workout, there, there's no app for that. And you know, when the grass smells like morning dew and the world smells like it's about to rain and you want to bottle the fragrance of your lover's sweat, well, there's no app for that. Not yet. So this poem, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to have a writing session with, with the wonderful Amy Herman. Woo! Yeah. yeah. If you heard about it, you like her. Wow. And uh, we, we were just writing questions to each other, and then we had to write a poem responding to the question. So her question was, but how safe is clinging to walls and cockroaches bellowing beneath toenails, and can ele electricity save human beings from falling to their death? <laughs> So I wrote the poem called Remote Console. <clears throat> Please don't misunderstand me. Don't place a knitted cozy over my words to muffle my whistle into a context made of silent steam. I'm not being contrary for the sake of irony. I'm not being skeptical just to disagree. I am being a cornfield of anxiety, vast with redundancy, easy to drive past without noticing. You like repetition, don't you? I know you do. I know you do. I know you do. This is a matter of safety and danger and all the other human constructs in between, all of the inedible corn-based creations. This is the sticky product of the masturbation of phallic semiotics. Have you seen their bar graphs lately? Their y-axis has erectile dysfunction. Can't even get it up for the cherry-filled pie graph they're always comparing to the sultry voluptuousness of their beloved bell curve. We are so redundant in our comparisons, so comfortable in our redundancy. This all started when we measured her equator, didn't it? When we counted her fault lines to tell her age, she, just like her daughters, does not indulge such per personal information. She started getting really pissed off the moment we had the audacity to name her oceans. They like they belong to our world, claiming that we understand the way they flow. Can you blame her for slapping us with them every once in a while? She is both lightning bolt and ocean. She conducts herself so well. She conducts herself so well. We need to be more resourceful with her resources. It's not that we should limit ourselves. It's just that we should try and control ourselves. We're still the ones that are in control. I concur. The sky is no limit. I agree. We should all drink from the I can do anything fountain. We should believe in whatever the fuck we want to, especially ourselves. We all need to protect ourselves from what we are capable of. But safety is no excuse for building a wall. And danger is the most influential of motivators, and at some point during your life, someone told you that standing under a tree is the worst place to be during a lightning storm. So the next time you walked home through the park under the illuminated crackling of a deep gray sky, you realized just how motivated you were not to die. 
So you built a wall. And you didn't even have the fairy tale wherewithal to use bricks or cinder blocks or cement or at the very least the primitive resourcefulness to use stones or wood. You used sheetrock and plaster and then you wondered how all the critters were able to crumble crawl their way in. You acted so shocked when peep and glory holes started popping up all over the place. You kept replastering it and replastering it. You were so concerned that it might crumble, leaving you exposed. So you built more walls to support it ran wires through them, hidden but connected. You became so concerned they might burn down accidentally that you injected them with asbestos. You built a roof to keep the sky out. You felt safe, but the glowing box in your plastered box told you that fear had written a new self-help help book, and that if you read it, you'd be even safer. And the same glowing box told you that danger came out with another album, and that it was safe to listen to it in the safety of your box, and you'll be hiding from her there. Reading Fear's book and listening to your favorite track on Danger's album, clinging to your favorite wall when she'll slap you with one of her oceans. Just to remind you that some things you cannot be protected from. Thank you.